Hi, I'm Don Lakin and welcome to another episode of Around the World in 80 Drinks. Today, again, we're filming at Dine Under, our, Dine Under Canvas, which is our most recent pop-up for Bar Events UK. So we supply giant TPs, mobile bars and event staff. Uh, during these times, there hadn't been many weddings going on, so we used our initiative and created this pop-up. So when the bars and restaurants in the UK could open, we opened this concept, Dine Under Canvas, pop-up bar, bar and restaurant, basically. Uh, all socially distant uh, but it does look like next month that we might have some uh, parties to do basically so we're going to be erecting these TPs in other people's gardens and they're going to be having socially distant small gatherings so this is our last weekend of dying under canvas uh, we do hope to be popping back up shortly so anyone that's been and wants to revisit or anyone that hasn't managed to come down yet uh, and wants to come and find us then we'll let you know details of that when we've got the permissions sorted uh, so Dine Under Canvas will be back but this is our last weekend for the time being so we've got an awesome guest on later um, he owns a cocktail bar called PK Cocktail Bar in Santorini There's, the views are absolutely stunning so really do stay tuned in for that he'll be on in about 15 minutes this again is a pre-record while we send it live at 8 o'clock on Saturday night I'm recording it slightly earlier because this venue will be busy at that time uh, so if you know anyone who wants to learn how to make some cocktails or travel around the world and see how other bartenders are doing it and what's happening around the world due to COVID, uh, then please do tell them and t tell them to, or t you know, tag them in this and, uh, and tell them to tell their friends. It is a really good show that is just entertainment and about drinks. So please, if anyone's interested in drinks or travel, then just tag them in this and tell them why they should watch it. And if you watch it on playback, just hashtag around the world in 80 drinks doing either one of those things just helps us spread our videos as far and wide as possible uh, we really want to try and make a decent show out of this so let's make a drink today we're doing the sidecar um, also on that note if anyone's got any drinks that they want to learn how to make then tell us in the comments and we'll make sure we add them to our shows or we'll show you previous shows we'll tag you in previous shows where we've done them before so the sidecar is quite an old drink um, again, the exact origin is unclear, um, but it's thought to have been invented around World War One era, uh, when sidecars were on, on, on motorcycles were actually a thing. Uh, the, the drink is actually named after the, that contraption, that, that piece of equipment that attaches the side of a motorcycle called the sidecar. Um, the ingredients that you're going to need is a cognac. I've got Re Remy Martin BSOP, a very superior old pale. It's um, it's a fantastic cognac. You can we've got um, we've got other you know stuff available. Corvassier VS VS is basically the younger version of a of a brandy. Um, BSOP slightly older, and then you can get you know much older, up to 15 years or so, even older than that. But I think on, on supermarket shelves you can you can get those sort of ages. The older the brandy means, the older it's been stood in casks, the longer it's had to age. Um, the more it's aged, the smoother it is, basically. Um, so the older you can find, the more expensive it's going to be. The more expensive, the reason it's more expensive is because when a brandy or a wine or anything is in a cask for an amount of time, there's a certain amount of evaporation um, and also risk of losing product. So basically, they have to cost all that in. So when it's sat in a cask for ages, they've lost a load of product through evaporation or wasted whatever. So that's the reason the, the end product, which is a lot smoother, a lot more full bodied, um, does come out at a bigger expense. So we're using Remy Martin BSOP. Um, I'm using Cointreau. Uh, you can use any other orange liqueur. Grand Marnier would be a fantastic liqueur actually to put with this drink because it's basically a brandy uh, um, orange liqueur. So considering you're already using brandy or cognac, then they're obviously gonna go really well together. And we're using fresh lemon. And that's pretty much it, really. Now, I'm just gonna get some sugar as well. Uh, on our bar here, we, we naturally stock light Muscovado sugar. I prefer using it in all, all my cocktails, to be honest, it's got dark spirits. The sugar is actually just a garnish. Um, so you don't have to use it. It doesn't go in the drink uh, unless you like sweet drinks. So just put that to one side for the time being, and we'll come to that in a minute. Right, okay, so there's um. There's no real right or wrong way to make this as far as measurements go. If you know you like brandy and you know you like it strong, then, you know, add more brandy, whatever. We'll, we'll get to that bit in a minute. But basically, to sort of follow previous rules that I've set in previous re weeks, I'm going to use one and a half brandy, 
or cognac. One and a half shots. And then to round up to my 50 mil mark, which is the general rule I've set in previous weeks, I'm gonna use half a shot of Cointreau or whatever orange liqueur you have. Now, this does make an exception to the rule because we don't have a sweet and sour balance here. So we don't have the one shot of sour to half a shot of sweet. All this needs is the same amount that you put in of Cointreau of lemon. What they say in as, uh, the creators or the... Uh, so, so basically this is in a lot of cocktail books. It's a big like, age-old classic. Savoy Hotel, they've got their own cocktail book, which is a go-to bible for bartenders. Harry Craddock uh, uh, basically wrote, wrote the cocktail book. Um, his ratio is 2-1-1. One, one. Um, so like I say, depending on how big you want the drink, um, just follow that sort of ratio and you'll be around about you know, the right flavours. Um, and that is in the Savoy cocktail book. Simon Difford, who writes The Difford's Guide, that's all online nowadays. You can buy it as a, as a, a book. That's considered the, the bartender's bible, really, as well. Um, he says it should be 2-1-1 as well. But you, you can pick up these um, ingredients lists all over the internet, and they'll all have slightly different um, uh, volumes to, to mix. Um, but essentially, if you're around about the 2-1-1 mark, then you, you're not going to be making a bad drink. So following my previous uh, rough guidance on previous weeks, it works out to be about 25, 30 mil in, a, in your average size lemon. Um, so if you cut that in half and then half again, so you've got a quarter of it, squeeze it in, then that's about the right uh, volume you put in of lemon as you are doing Cointreau, Grand Marnier, Triple Sec, whatever it is you've used. So that's around about the 2-1-1 uh, mixture there. So then we're gonna get some ice in. So the Ritz, actually, the Ritz Hotel in Paris does claim the origin of this drink. Uh, first recipes for the sidecar appear in around 1922 uh, in Harry's ABC of Mixing Cocktails and Robert Vermeer's Cocktails and How to Make Them. So that's the first time this drink's really been in print. Um, and like I say, the Ritz does claim it, but you know, with a lot of cocktails, there's a, a bit of controversy as to who made it and when, when it was made. Uh, it's first introduced in London by a bartender of Bucks Club. Uh, who credits the invention of the drink to an American army captain, in fact, in Paris uh, during World War I. So the origin of this drink is definitely around that time, I'd say. Uh, and the, the named after the motorcycle sidecar that the captain used. So that's, that's one story behind it. So, full of ice, give it a hard shake. There we go. I'm just gonna put some more ice in there while I garnish the drink to prevent any more dilution. Put that to one side. Now, you want it in a martini glass. In this premise, there is not one single martini glass and that's because we use disposables and we don't have any martinis on this menu. We use disposables here so we don't have to wash them and um, because we're in the middle of a field essentially uh, and we want to minimize the potential spread of covid so everything's disposable we try and make the disp disposables as posh as possible and we do recycle them all uh, also some of them are vegware so they're naturally uh, compost in in landfill or whatever um, but like i say we don't have any martini glass so if you have got a martini use it i'm going to be using this clear wine glass and it's plastic so I'm going to sugar the rim. So I'm just going to wet the rim. I'm going to wet it with lemon. You can drizzle water over it if you like, not a problem. And get my bar spoon. I'm just going to lay it on my chopping board. If you've got fancy tools like four rimming glasses, then use them. And then just want to make sure the sugar sticks to the edge of the rim, which it should do because the lemon's going to help it to stick. And basically, because we've got no sweet in the drink, this should help sweeten, the, sweeten it to taste. Um, so you get the sugar in your mouth when you do drink the drink. You wanna strain this. If you've got a strainer, use it. If you've got a fine strainer, use it. Any bartenders watching this will be thinking, what the hell is he doing? Um, that's only a single strain. Anything in a martini glass should be strained twice. So you can class this as one strain. And then the second strain will be a tea, a tea strainer or a little sieve just over the top of your martini glass. It catches any shards of ice, uh, but that's it really, because there's no fruit in there to catch. Right, okay, so that's essentially the sidecar. But what we can do is give it a nice garnish of a, a lemon twist. 
So I'm just going to take the edge of the lemon, the pith. In fact, you don't you don't want the white bit really. You just want a nice edge of lemon like that. Get a straw or a chopstick or whatever it is you've got at home. Wrap it round and it takes the form of it. Like so. And then hang it on the edge of your martini glass. And there you go. That is an, a lemon zest. You can do it with orange because you've got a bit of quantra in the drink and that's an orange liqueur. Um, but you just want some sort of zest on the side of the drink. It adds aesthetics to it, it adds a bit of flavour if you, if you twist it over the drink. When you twist it around your spoon, twist it over the drink and a bit of the zest will go over it. So it does add flavour and it certainly adds uh, aromatics to it. You can, I can smell that from here now, I can smell that lemon. So all we've got in there is cognac, a nice cognac because it's, that's the biggest part of the drink. Orange liqueur, if possible use Grand Marnier, if not use a nice orange liqueur, liqueur like Cointreau. Um, and then a bit of lemon, that is it. That is all we're putting in. One sidecar. Cheers. Yeah, maybe not a uh, three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon side uh, drink, but it is a very nice drink. Right, okay, so on that note, let's welcome our next guest. And as you may have noticed before, I produce my own shows now because uh, Laura's at home, busy. Um, so. His name is Vasilis. He is from and owns PK Cocktail Bar in Santorini. It's a rooftop bar. In fact, it's split over two levels. He's filming outside on his lower deck at the moment, uh, or when we film this. And like I say, his views are incredible. So, everybody, please welcome Vasilis from PK Co Cocktail Bar, Roll VT. Thanks for coming on Around the World and 80 Drinks. It looks like a stunning day out there. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. It is a fine, hot day today, um, but lovely. Yourself? It's, uh, the weather's not too bad here. I'm, I'm good. We're, I'm not in an open bar at the moment, but I believe one of your bars is open. Yeah, the upstairs bar's open at the moment. But it looks very nice, the weather there. It looks like you're in a you're protected by the sun i'm quite envious of that nice canopy <laughs> tent you have there yeah well maybe we'll ship them out to you at some point <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping i'm hoping <laughs> so uh tell us a bit about the bar and and how, how's it been with lockdown and that sort of thing um well basically i'm one of the few businesses on santorini that open all year round so um i only closed for the lockdown um and during the lockdown, I mean, it was a nice time to reflect and look back on how to be shut down against my choice. It gave me a good time to look over everything, how um, we've worked in the past and how we can better work in the future. So I took it in a very positive way. Obviously, it was very damaging for a lot of businesses, but I used it as productive as I could. Um, I tried to give my knowledge to other people online, rethink the things I do. So it's, you can take it both ways. You can take it good and bad. Uh, yeah. I look at it very positively. So yeah, it's been okay. Good. Um, I think I think me and you have done a similar thing. And that's how I found out about you. Is that we've been going live on Facebook, or I think you've been doing it on LinkedIn. Obviously, you've got a stunning view behind you. So uh, I guess you've. Uh, kept yourself busy with these cocktail making things yeah no it's been really good and to, to be honest the best part of it when you can't make people drinks and serve them to to give them their their lift um i try and you know give them the view give them a drink here so they can learn it to make at home because obviously not everyone has the equipment to make at home but it's actually you know as you know a lot of the stuff is very simple but the view fixed a lot of people's days, especially like the rainy days in England or wherever other people were around the world. It did uh, it did a lot of good, I believe, and it you know it does good for your karma. Yeah, it really does. Just seeing that view is definitely uplifting. <laughs> um, so when you were locked down, obviously the bar was closed. It's it's open now. Is there tourists there, or are the tourists there? Or is it locals? So. 
the first we opened back up on the 25th of May. We were closed for two months and 10 days. Um, from the 25th of May, the first month was basically just Greeks because um, the areas were locked down two areas. So, for example, you couldn't inter travel from islands or Athens to anywhere else unless you had residency in that area. So our first business was just locals. Um, this was a, a, a surprise to have to rethink how to work a business that is predominantly tourist based. So um, then slowly, slowly, we started getting tourists from the nations that were opening up. Um, and basically now we have almost, we have a lot of tourists on the island, except for the countries that are still restricted by travel. So that's basically our only restriction on what we're having at the moment. Um, people, I believe, are still a little afraid to travel. They're a bit unsure of, um, you know, what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Uh, but everything's going, you know, it's starting to pick up the island. The beaches are starting to look full. People are walking around. Um, so it's, it's good. It's um, getting back to normal. Good. It's good to hear. So you're predominantly cocktails, aren't you? You don't really serve much else. Yeah, a little, most, 90, I'd say 90% of our business is cocktails. Um, we have a little bit of coffee because it's a very Greek thing. Okay. Um, wine, because there's some very good wine on Santorini. Um, but yeah, most mostly cocktails or mocktails because we get a lot of non not, like, people that don't drink alcohol. So okay. we try and cater a lot of our drinks to them as well. Okay, awesome. So maybe that's a good intro for you to make as a drink then. Yeah, my pleasure. So, Over to um, you. This is what I call the 300. It's um, basically a, a smoked old fashioned with uh, Metaxa, facing like a cognac brandy, but it's in kind of a class of its own. It's neither a cognac or brandy, but it's on that base. Um, instead of, and I based it basically on an old fashioned, um, but smoked. And as the season goes, I'll change what I smoke it with. So now in the summer, just because of a bit of a more sweeter flavors and for the Greeks, I'm using um, cloves to smoke it, uh, but very few because it's very strong to smoke from the clove. Um, honey water, just so it's pre-diluted and doesn't have to dilute in the stirring jar or decanter. Um, mastica, which is a liqueur from pine uh, the pine trees. Um, generally, this comes from Hios, but all Greek ingredients and our bitters, which I make from like roots, um, all herb roots that I just pick off the mountain in places. Um, yeah, so that I do it in any way you'd make most bitters, but just with local roots and bitters from herbs and plants. Um, I use a decanter preferably just because it keeps the smoking nice and well and then you'll be able to whirl it around in the drink. Um, but to be honest, a lot of it, the smoke, as much as you get a little bit of the flavour of the smoke, it is mostly for effect for the customer. It's, a very, it's visually very pleasing, especially if you're being served at your table and not just at the bar and the drink's brought to you. We, usually at the bar, we serve these at the table. So it's a nice feeling, part of the senses of having your drink is visually how it looks, how it smells, how it tastes. Um, so I'm going to start with filling my decanter with ice. And I don't need too much, but I want to fill the whole bottom level with ice. So that the whole base of the decanter is nice and chilled i didn't get the right ice for this <laughs> <laughs> as um, i was rushing a little bit beforehand so i've got the bigger ice it might take a little while sorry people i'll talk while i while i fill my decanter 
Yeah, we have here because it's so hot. We have two ice machines, and um, we have the the cupped ice, which has the little finger hole, and then little squares of ice. Oh, this is all gonna. This is gonna take too long. Give me one second, and I'll get the right ice. <laughs> no worries. Apologies. We'll uh, we'll appreciate the view while you're getting ice. Exactly. So what you can see in front of you at the moment, apart from the level, that big mass in front is is the volcano. That's the oh, wow. big that's the big volcano from the last main eruption. And there's a little black peak. You can see a little island behind it and a little black peak in the middle. The little black peak is um Neakameni, which is the name of the bar, and the front peak is Neakameni, which is the larger, newer volcano. Okay. So a little bit of the volcano history, because it was it's two basic volcanoes, and there's a third volcano behind us on the island. Um, they're all dormant, nice and safe. Um, but it's just it's a beautiful scene. The caldera is really nice. Um, you can literally sit here for hours and soak up the energy and a good few cocktails. Yeah. Um, to enjoy and I'm coming. Lovely. There we are, people. Apologies. So, um, because here we work with a lot of tourists from different places, um, we don't stick to a specific fixed measure, especially with this drink, because the everything else to it—the mastica, the honey water—that goes to a fixed measure. Maybe a little bit up if you go 10 ml up on your base spirit. Um, but some people that don't want their drink so strong, even though it is like a, an old fashioned based drink, which is strong, um, we'll just water it down with less ice so there's a little bit more dilution so that all types of people can enjoy all types of drinks um, just with less strength of the alcohol. So as a base measure on the 300, I'd always go for about 60 ml starting up to 70, 80 ml. And if someone wanted it weaker, I'd, I'd do it for 40 ml and just leave it to dilute a little bit longer. So today, I'm going to do a 40 a plus a 10. Ten ml of my mastica. And ten ml of honey water. Two dashes of our bitters. And then I'm going to give it a swirl round while it's in there to get it mixed up. And then start my smoke. Typical. Lighter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. I'm going to put like three cloves in. And start with a jet lighter because the cloves and see instantly put some nice big blue of smoke in there. Cover it and close it. So if we were serving this at the table for the customer, we'd close it up now so that you take it to the table and serve it like this. The smoke pours out if there's no wind. And then just now I'm just gonna give it a nice swirl so it works the smoke into the drink. My glass. A nice big ice cube. And I'd usually do it about 30 seconds. Strain off the top so the ice doesn't come out. Well, let me go a bit higher for you. 
and then just slowly pour it out. my glass. As simple as that. That looks, that looks really good. And obviously, you, and just for a garnish, usually, I mean, I, I just, as, as well, go with the season. At the moment, like, I have a nice fresh rosemary here, which I use for another bunch of cocktails. I just cut a little sprig off that. Place that on the side. And to serve it like that. Beautiful. Amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah, so um, it's all Greek produce. As local as possible. The bit is we make ourselves. Um, yeah, amazing. It's more on a thyme, thyme base and rosemary and oregano. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, awesome. Good work. Yeah, so when we were chatting last time, you mentioned that uh, you obviously lived in the UK before and uh, you were driving to work one day and you thought, hmm, <laughs> tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, no, so if you can imagine, look, with, with this view here, I used to come here every year on my school holidays. I finished school, I started working. And don't get me wrong, I love, I really love England. But it, it's a great place to grow up. But I was driving, it was pouring down with rain. It was literally a, a, a 20 minute run to work if there was no rain, or 45 minutes to an hour in traffic. And I'm sitting in traffic and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and I just turned around sent a message to my boss and two days later packed everything from my house packed it all into my car and drove over um, nice. and now I just go back for a nice holiday you know like Christmas time when it's beautiful up in central London um, and now here I am for the past 12 years amazing but it was very easy story, my father that. opened this bar yeah. <laughs> absolutely incredible that's, a, that's yeah, inspiring, that is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I had it very easy because my father's from Santorini and um, he opened this bar in 1976. So I grew up basically in this bar. Like when I was in my school holidays or summer holidays, I literally lived below here. Um, on the, it's, a, it's on the edge of a cliff. So basically things go down in in steps yeah. so there's the first level second level third level fourth fifth sixth um so it was th that's what finally drove me to say oh i gotta go if i have this here why why stay <laughs> why stay in rainy old england but, yeah very lucky amazing amazing <laughs> look, but i miss um, an english we've... summer and a good barbecue <laughs> look we could chat for hours really good especially with that view in the background but um we've Time's nearly up, so I just want to thank you so much for coming on Around the World in 80 Drinks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Vasilis. Thank you. Thank you very much, people. Thank you, Dan. Cheers, see ya. What an absolute legend right there, and what a stunning, stunning bar. I say this about most people that come to our shows, but again, that is bang on the bucket list. I mean, I'd even put a shift behind that bar, so hopefully one day we'll come out and see Vasilis in PK Cocktail Bar. We'll tag his bar in the comments of this, and please, like I say every week, if you're watching, please comment. Just say anything. Just put a full stop and hit enter. Every comment that someone leaves, it helps us gain natural traction in Facebook. Uh, it will show it to all your friends that you've commented on something. So please comment, even if you don't tag someone, and just let us know where you think it'll be good to go next in the world. On Monday, I'm filming a bartender in Dubai. Uh, so look forward to that next week. You've been watching Around the World Native Drinks. I'm Dan Lakin, and I am done.